All right, welcome back everyone. This is Mr. Martin. We are in a brand new unit and we got a brand new section right here. This is 7.1, exponential growth. Okay, after today's lesson, we're gonna be able to explain exponential growth and its qualities and also while recognizing the real world applications involving them. All right, let's jump straight to it. So first, our things to know, uh, we have used function notation before, we are gonna be using it again. So just remember that this is the way that a function is written, and it is meant to be a precise way of giving information about the function without a rather lengthy explanation. Okay, I went ahead and provided this for you. This is a very helpful um, piece of information here about function notation. So the first thing here, Remember, we read this f of x, right? f of x. Okay, this is not to be confused with f times x. So remember, we are not doing this multiplication right here. This is simply our notation. Okay, and the way that this works, this is an example right here. Any value that is in our parentheses, remember this is our input value, and then the expression equal to f of x, this is our output value. And then this part here talks about how we can name our function anything we want. Some of our more common ones are gonna be f, g of h. And if you see in these examples, sometimes there might be an x as the input value. Um, sometimes we might have other variables as well. Here in this case, we have a b, here is a t. And you know, sometimes your function name might actually be a name. This, so this one would be uh, pronounced George of x is equal to x to the uh, 23rd power. So this talks about the y value in our function, so it is important to remember that y is equal to f of x, and we can read it backwards, so transversely, f of x is also equal to y. And if we are talking about ordered pairs, remember an ordered pair is x comma y, so if we are using function notation, this is gonna be x comma f of x. Okay, so this is a really good Helpful piece of information to look over multiple times, just kind of get a handle on it, make sure you know it. This is the kind of stuff that we're gonna be talking about in this unit. All right, so let's look at exponential growth, okay? This is where we describe the fast growing rate where growth becomes more rapid in relation to the growing total number. So we're gonna be talking about exponential growth in this section here. Our first example asks us to consider this following equation. We got f of x is equal to 6x plus 3, and then we want to find f of 4. And we do this by substituting 4 for x. Okay, so this is simply saying, hey, wherever I see an x, right, I'm just going to plug that 4 in. So let's go ahead and start writing this. We got f of 4 is equal to 6, and then remember we said we are substituting that 4 in 4x. All right, so this is going to be f of 4 is equal to 24 plus 3, and then we get f of 4 is equal to 27. So remember, if we did a ordered pair as x comma y or x comma f of x, this would say whenever x is equal to 4, then y or f of x is equal to 27. So remember, we are using this input of x to find our output of y. All right, so go ahead and pause the video right here. I got this example to the right. I want you to try this one on your own, then come on back and take a peek. All right, great work. So welcome back. Remember, we are plugging this two in for x, so negative 2 times 2, we get that negative 4, then minus 7, negative 11. So when x is equal to 2, y, or h of x in this case, is equal to negative 11. So remember, we are only substituting for that x on these types of problems when we ask for h of 2 or f of 4, something along those lines. All right, we also have some graphing to do. So in example number two, it says graph f of x is equal to 2x, and we also got f of x is equal to 2 to the x. And we got these tables here that we want to go ahead and fill out. So I do want to show you guys something on the calculator here. It is going to be 
super useful. It's going to help save you some time. So let's go ahead and open up our calculators. Remember at any time if you need to reset them, we do that by doing second plus 712. And then we can restore the defaults by doing second plus 7, 2, and 2. All right, so let me go ahead and pop this out. Boom. All right, so what we want to do is we want to enter in both of our functions. We got two of them. So if you look at the very top left of your calculator, we have this Y equals button. We can go ahead and tap that, and it's going to bring us up to all of these different functions that we can enter in. So our first one, y1, let's go ahead and enter in 2x. So we got 2x. And then we have our second function, which is 2 to the x. So we got to use this little caret, and you see how that brings up the exponent. So we type that in, okay. I'm gonna go over here and change this color because I think on my notes, my second function was blue. And then I'm gonna make this first one red. So let's do that. All right, boom. Okay, so now what we can do, we have this table function. So this is table written in blue in the top right. So we need to use the second, and then we can hit this graph or table button. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna bring up our table of values. So here you see our X values. We got zero through four. That's on both of these graphs. And then we have our Y values. Remember Y is the same as f of x. So we got 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, and we got 1, 2, 4, 8, 16. All right, so let's go ahead and plug those in to our tables. Boom. All right, so I got these plugged in. We are good to go. Now we want to go ahead and graph them. So I'm going to plot all of these points uh, for my first graph, 2 of x, or I'm sorry, 2, 2x. Two Okay, so I plotted all those points. That's 0, 0, 1, 2, 2, 4, and so on. And then it looks like I have a straight line that I can make. So I'll go ahead and draw that line. And then I will go over and graph the second one. So we got these points here. Go ahead and plot those. I'll give you a second. I'll go ahead and do mine. Bam, look at that, really good. All right, and then you can see this is kind of a different bit of a shape. Um, for x value of 4, we got 16, but my graph only went up to 12. I went ahead and uh, numbered these by 1s, so I wasn't able to put the fourth dot, but I can, or I'm sorry, the fifth dot, but I can fit these ones, and then I can go ahead and draw that line too. So you can see how the red line is linear, and my blue line is exponential. So what is actually happening in the change of y values, well, here on the left, I'm adding 2 each time. And on the right, I am doubling each time. So I went ahead and also labeled these two graphs. So I would recommend doing this also, especially if you're only working with one color. Uh, it'll be useful to uh, go ahead and label those. All right, very good. So example number three. Okay, it asks, are the following functions linear, exponential, or neither? So at the end of your notes, I want everyone to skip ahead real quick. Um, I want you guys to write this down. All right, so at the back where it says extra notes down here, uh, I want you guys to write exponential function. Um, a way for us to identify this is we have a variable for the exponent. So where the exponent would be, we need a variable in that spot. And that's what's going to help us determine if a function is an exponential function. All right, so let's go back to our other page. 
So let's take a look at this first one. Do we have an exponent? We don't even have an exponent, so we don't even have a variable in there. Uh, but if we went back to our polynomials unit and we saw that we have an exponent of a one, which in this case, this x has an exponent of one, that means we have a linear function, okay? And this is actually uh, in slope intercept form. This is the same as y equals mx plus b. So this is uh, the normal equation of a line. So this one is linear. All right, looking at the second one, we do have an exponent and that exponent is a variable. So this is gonna be a exponential, okay? What about this next one? Well, we have a variable, but it is not as the exponent and the exponent here is a one. This is actually slope intercept form again. So we have another linear function. Our next one has a variable on the exponent just like this one. So here we are exponential. And our last one, some of you may have guessed already, but we do have an exponent, but that exponent is an actual value and not a variable. So this one is going to be neither. And the reason it is not linear is because that variable is not, or I'm sorry, that exponent is not a one. This exponent is a two. And if you were wondering, this is actually a quadratic. So if we are looking for linear, exponential, or neither, it would be neither. All right, this is the standard form of our exponential function. This is something you really wanna to commit to memory. So it's just f of x is equal to a times b raised to the x, okay? And we do need to know the anatomy of this. So this letter A, this is what we call our initial value, okay? Whatever value we are starting with, this is the value for our variable A. And the variable B, this stands for our growth factor, okay? So this is the rate in which we are growing. So our growth factor and our initial value. So make sure you commit those to memory. All right, let's take a look at the next example. So here we got two different functions, h of t, and we also have g of x. So like we did before in the calculator, we want to type both of these functions in there and then we can get our tables. So from this screen on the calculator, let me go ahead and uh, put this up for you. We can go back to our y equals button and this brings up our list of functions and we can just simply write over them. We wanna write this in exactly as we see it. And if you notice this case, this first one, we have a t. Um, that variable does not matter. We only have the X button on here, so we can use a X instead of that T. They're gonna stand for the same thing. So I wanna type this in two, then I wanna put this parentheses, put this two here, and then I'm gonna raise that to the X. And then my second one, I am going to do three, and then I will do 1.7 in parentheses and that is also raised to the X. And then I hit my second button and then I go back to my table. And then now I got my table of values. So looking at your calculator also, um, sometimes you might need to tab down to see all of the values listed. So like if you see here, it's only gonna display so many digits, 25.056 but down below we have 0.0563. Okay, so sometimes you might need to highlight these just to see all of those digits based on what you might be rounding to or what have you. So let's go ahead and enter these in onto our tables and then we will go ahead and graph these. So pause the video here, enter in both of your tables and your graphs and then um, come back and check out what I got. Let's see if we match up. 
All right, welcome back. So I went ahead and filled in this table. I went ahead and plotted my graphs. Um, yep, so my matchup, two, four, and eight, three, five point one, and eight point six seven. So you can see where that initial value is starting at. Remember, this is our A. So my A is two, I'm starting here at two. On this one, my A is three, and I'm starting out here at three. And then you can see the growth rate. So this one has a higher growth rate. Um, just slightly higher than this one and this is what makes the shape of those graphs look a little bit different all right very good all right in the case of needing to actually create an equation that fits the points of a table uh, this is very very easy to do as long as we remember the standard form so remember the standard form was f of x is equal to a times B raised to the X. Okay, so we know what our initial value is, right? What's our first value point? Right here on our table. At zero, our first value point is 2.2. So let's go ahead and label that. We got 2.2. Now we just need to find our growth rate. Okay, and we do this the same way that we found our common ratio when we did our explicit formulas and that is taking our second term divided by our first term. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so let's pop this bad boy out. If you need to go back to the home screen, you can do that by hitting the second button and then mode, that means to quit. Now we're back in this home screen, so let's find 3.96 divided by 2.2. Uh, let me draw that in there first. We remember we're going to divide going this way. So we got 3.96 divided by 2.2. Okay, and this tells us 1.8. But let's see if that actually holds up. We know that 2.2 times 1.8 will give us 3.96. Let's see if that works moving forward. So we're going to take 1.8 and we're going to multiply that by 3.96. And sure enough, it does. We can even try it one more time. 7.128 times 1.8 and 12.8304. So it looks like we are good. So we have a growth rate of 1.8. So let's put that in. Okay, so now that we found the A and B, let's just go ahead and write our function. So we got f of x is equal to, what's my A value? 2.2. What's my B value? 1.8. And then raise to that exponent, that variable in the exponent. All right, so the next thing that we got, we have this thing called percent increase, okay? And this is what's going to help us solve some of those word problems that we got. So when you see this A, okay, in a percent increase, remember this is our starting amount. This is our in, uh, initial value. And if we have a percent that we are increasing, okay, we use this part of the formula right here. Okay, this percent increase, this is the same as saying 1 plus our rate. Okay, it is important that we add a 1 to this percent increase. Okay, so just remember this part is our 1 plus our rate. Okay, and the part that is very important as you see here to calculate always 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 convert your percent into a decimal. Okay, so let's take a look. We got three different word problems here. These uh, scenarios we want to not only create an equation that models them, but we also want to answer that question. So the first one says there is a pair of limited Yeezy 350 V2 that were purchased at $220, and then its value increased by 15% each year. What is gonna be their value in seven years? So if we take a look, what is my initial value? Well, my initial value is 220, 
Okay, and then the rate that it increases each year is 15%. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to model this. And remember, you can use any type of function name. Um, here, since I'm talking about Yeezys and I'm talking about time and years, my function is going to be y of t. Okay, and then I simply use this um, percent increase formula where I have 1 plus the percent increase. Okay, and I converted that 15% into a decimal. So remember, if you forgot how to do that, okay, you can always take your percent and divide by 100. So 15 divided by 100 gives me that 0.15. Okay, then I want to go ahead and simplify this part, right? Okay, so 1 plus 0.15, I can easily add that up. So now this is my equation, or my function rather, that models this scenario right here. Okay, so my initial value and then my percent increase raised to the t, and then I want to find out what happens in seven years. So I know the value of t, right? I gave you seven years, so I'm simply going to plug in seven for t, just like we did in one of the earlier examples. And then I'm going to go ahead and plug that into my calculator and I will let it solve. So let me go ahead and show you. Oops, wrong one. Let's do that here. So we got our calculator. Let's add this up right here. Let's go ahead and clear this. So we're going to type this in 220 and then parentheses 1.15 raised to the seventh power. And then I get 585.2043737. But remember, if I am talking about dollars and cents, I'm going to round to the nearest second decimal place. So this is going to be 585.20. So $585.20 is what they are worth in seven years. All right, very good. So go ahead and pause the video here. I want you to try the next one on your own where it says a home is worth 186000 And let's see what you get. All right, welcome back. So the way that we modeled this one, I decided to do H of T because I am talking about a home. So I started with my initial value, which is 186000 2.6% as a decimal is going to be 0.026. And then I added that one, and this is what my function looks like. And then I wanted to know the value in 10 years, so I simply plug in that 10, and boom, I get this value here. So in 10 years, it is going to be worth $240,000. That's pretty good. Um, in the 10 years, my value increased oh, 14, 56,000. Not bad. It's a nice little chunk of change if you sell your house. All right, pause the video one more time and try this last one on your own. We got a population of rabbits. Um, this is something that happens all the time. So if we started with 43 rabbits and they're increasing by 173%, that is a lot. And this is happening every day. So we want to know how many rabbits there will be in two weeks. All right, go ahead and pause the video now. All right, welcome back. So if you didn't, remember, if we are increasing every day we still need to know how many days so two weeks is actually 14 days so make sure you do any type of conversions as you see fit but we went ahead and modeled this first we started with 43 173 percent is actually 1.73 so once we add that up we're going to have a bigger number here this is 2.73 and then T is time and days, so I need to put 14 in there. I plug that in, and then bam, I got millions, millions of rabbits. You should have something like 54 million. And then remember, we have a decimal. Um, we can't have a partial bunny, so we're just going to round down to our nearest uh, whole number. All right, very good. So in two weeks, there are 54 million. Make sure you label your answers what are we talking about we were talking about rabbits and not cheeseburgers so make sure you label this as rabbits 
All right, and then we got our last example, and this one is uh, fairly easy. Here we are just talking about identifying the initial value and the percent of increase. So the initial value is actually really simple. We know that it is our A value right here, so I'm just gonna plug in this 0 0.5. I know that that is my initial value. Now to find the percent increase, okay, remember, we want this in a percentage. So when we were looking for the decimal, we took the percent and divided by 100. If I'm trying to go the opposite way, instead of dividing by 100, I'm going to be doing what? Multiplying by 100. Okay, so I'm going to multiply 100 to whatever math I'm doing here. And I want to take this value. Remember, last time we added a 1. So what is the opposite of adding a 1? And that is subtracting a 1. So I'm going to take this 723. Whoops and I'm going to subtract a one. And then we're gonna see what this equals. So let's go ahead and uh, pull up this calculator. Okay, so we got 100. Here, let me let you guys see what I'm doing here. So we got 100 times 1.723 minus one, and then boom. So I got 72. 0.3%. So it already did the work for me. So that is my answer right there. All right. So 72.3%. That is what I'm looking for. All right. One last pause. You do the last one. Come on back. All right. Welcome back. So remember, we put that 100 on the end because we are looking for a percent. 2.8 minus 1 times that 100 gives me 180. So that is my 180%. And then remember, my initial value, that is easy on the eyeballs. It's the first thing you see in that function. So that is my initial value right there. All right, that is it. That is my lesson for the day. Other than these extra notes, these are already printed on there for you. This is just some kind of financial terminology. If you ever hear that word appreciation, that means the value of something is increasing over time. Remember, we are talking about exponential growth. Growth is an increase. Okay, and if you ever see the word principal, I am not talking about the principal at school. I am talking about the total amount of money that I am borrowing or investing. And this does not include any interest earned or interest paid. Okay, remember the principal, this is just your initial value, your IV, all right, initial value. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed. Make sure you took those notes down. Make sure you look at those notes. Uh, make sure you practice uh, on the CWs, the coursework, the homework, whatever I give to you. Make sure you are practicing. Ask a friend, ask a family member, ask a teacher. There is somebody out there to help you. Like always, it's been a pleasure. I will see you on the next one. Peace out.